Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, I saw this integral floating around the internet, so I decided to do it. Um, almost all the channels that did this integral um, used uh, Feynman's Technique, or the Leibniz Rule, to, uh, to solve it. Um, and if you followed my channel for a while, um, and you saw this integral, I'm sure you immediately recognized how to do it. Um, but I'm going to show it on this channel because um, it is an integral that uh, a uh, integral that can be solved using um, Feynman's technique, and uh, pretty much that's it. You can do it with contour integration, Feynman's technique, and I don't think there's any other way to do it. So um, let's get started. All right, the first thing we want to recognize is that uh, sine of x squared is uh, simply the real part of e to the i x squared. I'm sorry, the imaginary part. That is the imaginary part of e to the i x squared. So let's go ahead and rewrite our integral. So i is equal to the imaginary part of the integral from 0 to infinity of of, uh, let's see, e to the negative x squared times e to the i x squared over x squared dx. And then um, we can combine these two using the properties of exponents into one x into uh, one exponent on e. That would be e to the i minus 1 times x squared. i minus 1 times x squared. Okay, so now we will uh, reparameterize this integral like this. We will create a function of t that is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the negative tx squared over x squared dx. I just picked negative tx squared because it tends to work out better that way instead of positive tx squared. Um, it might not matter in this case, but why take the chance? Um, all right. So that's our function of t. So if we took the imaginary part of our function of t, evaluated at the point, let's see, we want i minus 1, but there's a negative sign there, so we'd have to evaluate it at 1 minus i. So the imaginary part of our function evaluated at 1 minus i would give us back our original integral. Okay, so now let's take a derivative with respect to t. Okay, that would give us I'll write it down here. That would give us f prime of t is equal to, well, let's see, um, we'll still have the integral from 0 to infinity. Um, if we take the derivative with respect to t of this thing, we still get back the e to the negative tx squared. Um, but then we'll, we will recover a negative x squared. So we will be negative, and then the x squared will cancel with that x squared dx. All right. So that's some form of the, the, uh, the Gaussian integral. So let's make the substitution that, uh, let's see, tx squared is equal to u squared. All right. Taking the square root on both sides gives us square root of t times x is equal to u. Um, Therefore, dx is equal to du over 
the square root of t. So our new f prime of t is equal to negative integral 0 to infinity of, let's see, negative 1 over the square root of t times e to the negative u squared du, and that would be equal to negative uh, square root of pi over 2 times t to the negative 1 half. So there is our f prime of t. Did I do that right? Yeah, this part would become square root of pi over 2, and this is a negative t to the negative 1 half, so that's right. Okay, but don't forget, we don't want f prime of t, we want f of t. So we go backwards by integrating. So our f of t is going to be equal to the indefinite integral, well, hold on going to be equal to square root of pi over 2 times the indefinite, the antiderivative with respect to t of t to the negative 1 half, which would be equal to, let's see, we'll have negative square root of pi over 2 times t to the 1 half over 1 half or times 2. Um, yeah, one half, one half, yeah, so times 2, so just negative square root of pi t to the 1 half. All right, yeah, t, no, plus c, t to the 1 half over 1 half, you should multiply it by 2, that gets rid of that 2, and we still have the negative square root of pi. All right. So now let's evaluate our function of, uh, of t at the point 1 minus i. Okay. So our function evaluated at 1 minus i is going to be equal to negative square root of pi times 1 minus i to the 1, oh, I'm sorry, we have to take care of that plus c first. We don't like that there. Um, so, oh boy, we never did a very, we didn't do a very important step over here. Um, we need to find a value for A value for uh, t that we can plug in that makes this integral nice. Huh. The only one I can think of is infinity. Uh, f evaluated at infinity is going to give us zero. Let's go with it. All right, so if we evaluated this at the point infinity, um, we would get zero is equal to negative square root of pi times infinity. In other words, C is going to be equal to positive infinity. Um, we don't usually like to have that, but since we're working uh, in the complex world and we will end up taking the imaginary part of this. Don't forget, this infinity is a purely real infinity. So taking the imaginary part at the end, that positive infinity will simply drop out. Okay, so where was I? Right, we were evaluating our function of t at the point 1 minus i, giving us negative square root of pi times 1 minus i to the 1 half plus infinity, a real infinity. Okay. 
So now what we need to do is take the imaginary part of this. But before that, we're going to have to put this into exponential form. So what would 1 minus i be in exponential form? Well, let's see. We go over 1 and then down 1. So the argument is going to be square root of 2. I'm sorry, the uh, magnitude will be square root of 2. And then, let's see, we went over 1, down 1. So we're going to have e to the negative i pi over 4. So that's e to the negative i pi over 4. Okay, and then we're taking that to the one-half power. So, f evaluated at 1 minus i is going to give us negative square root of pi times 2 to the one-fourth power times e to the negative i pi over 8. Uh, plus infinity. Okay, so let's figure out what happens if we take the imaginary part. Taking the imaginary part on this side will result in this going away. This, the imaginary, let's see, that would be, that would be cosine pi over 8 minus i sine pi over 8. So taking the imaginary part of that would just leave us with the sine pi over 8. Sine pi over 8, and that's the answer. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that.